Okay, so strategy, structure, systems, shared values, skills, staffing, and style. I'm going to go in that order. So these three, the ones in black, are called the hard S's because they are more tangible. You can see them, you can, you can, you can manipulate them more easily. And typically the CEOs tend to <laughs> manipulate these because they can see what they're doing. They can change from Oracle to SAP or things like that. While these, the soft ones are harder to change, okay? But all seven, as we will be seeing, need to be changed and need to be tweaked for the organization to really succeed. And most importantly, all of them need to be aligned. And that's why I keep using the term internal alignment. And hopefully I'm going to give you some examples which will make this clear to you during this presentation. So the first S is strategy. Okay, and so I've covered, colored it in red over here. It is the starting point for every organization. Why does the organization exist? And when I say organization, I just don't mean business organizations. It can be government, it can be a charity, it can be a startup entrepreneurship, whatever. Okay? What is that organization's purpose? What is its mission? What's it trying to do? Okay. Based on that, all the other S's have to be aligned. So that's, it. like I said, it's the starting point. And if it's in a competitive field, what is its competitive advantage? Why do its customers come to it rather than to somebody else? What is its unique selling proposition? And here are three ways. One is, is it the cheapest? Okay. Is it the most focused? Does it focus on certain high net worth individuals or certain people with certain needs? Or does it differentiate itself from the competition, right? So when I first started taking Uber, I got downloaded the Uber app. I took it because I was spending too much money in black cabs. <laughs> now it's just become convenient and so on. Okay, so the next S is structure. And you have to choose the organization structure that best supports your strategy. If you're all about cost saving and efficiency, then it's more mechanistic. This is an old shot of the Ford Motor Company, right? Everyone's very kind of uh, very fast working and very efficient. But you can have a, this is the McLaren factory in Woking, which makes supercars, very expensive cars. And they're very, they make only a few. They don't make hundreds and thousands uh, per month. And so it's more organic. So it's more responsive to the environment. This is more like a machine. Even the human beings working work like machines, like robots. And then you can see that this is robotized and so on, right? Let's move to the second, the third S, systems. And this one is what we call the performance management system or the reward and recognition system. And you have to, one of the big decisions is whether you're going to go for an extrinsic system or an intrinsic. Are you going to reward people based on money, on, on something external to their work, or intrinsic something internal to their work? So do you want to choose people who enjoy doing that sort of work, regardless of how much they get paid for it, and then you create good job satisfaction for them? Or do you say, I know this job is not really interesting for you, but hey, I'll give you a lot of money, and maybe that will make you motivated to work hard. The other thing you can think about is lower order needs and higher order needs. So lower order needs are more basic needs like food, clothing, shelter, safety, and so on, while higher order needs are self-esteem, self-actualization. And you need to know what your staff is really interested in. If your staff are only interested in lower order needs and money, fine, give them money. If your staff are interested in higher order needs, then you should you know, give them that. Okay, so these, and again, as we'll see in the next uh, couple of slides, it'll be linked to the shared values. Now we come to shared values, and this is really important. This is the key, and for an organizational behavior professor, this is the most important one, okay? Because it's the organization's DNA. It informs and shapes things like the culture, the norms, the rituals, the artifacts, what does your logo look like? What does your office space look like? And most importantly, it impacts recruitment, selection, and attrition. So for instance, Nordstrom, the big uh, high-end department store, they just have one rule for their employees. Use good judgment in all situations, right? And they just want you to be customer oriented and use your good judgment to solve the customer's problem. You might say, oh, that's just too little. But they choose people who will abide by that rule and understand what that rule means and apply it in the spirit in which they want. Zappos is also a retail company, so, uh, and also Nordstrom started as a shoe company. Zappos is a shoe company. You can see the logo of a shoe here. And they are now acquired by Amazon. But 
we are very customer orientated. Their longest um, single call can go up to even 10 hours. One customer service <laughs> person speaking to a customer. Just one call can last even 10 hours. And uh, the SEO is a very interesting concept. During the uh, orientation week, the induction program, after four days, he offers people, he says, look, if you think you've not joined the wrong organization, here's a couple of thousand dollars. You can take that as a free gift. I'll pay you for the four days you've worked and you can move on. So he actively encourages people who, who after they've joined, feel perhaps it's not a good fit for them to leave. And that's called attrition. And good organizations are very clear that they want to attract people who share the same values as them. And they want to get rid of people or encourage people to leave who do not share the same values. Okay. Now we come to skills and skills are also called competencies. And this should link to your competitive advantage or your unique selling proposition. Okay. Uh, you want to choose people who make your organization distinctive and differentiated from other ones. So these are two famous uh, restaurants. This is, of course, McDonald's. And here it's all about fast, fast, fast and a quick customer service. So you can see he's frying so many burgers at the same time. And here there is, uh, it's no longer in existence, but it, it used to win the best restaurant in the world title many, many times. It's El Bui which is in Spain. And you can see this is, it's almost like a group of scientists, right? So these are very skilled, very specialized quality orientation, focus on perfection. So for this restaurant, you need these sort of people. For this restaurant, you need people who are quick and uh, nimble and can respond to customers quickly, okay? So again, be sure you're choosing the right people, the right fit for your strategy. Staffing. Okay, so this is now what sort of people do you want? So you've got the Emirates Airlines people here, and you've got Virgin Atlantic here. Both airlines, but maybe different profiles. What sort of what is the heart? What is the heart rather than the head? The head part is the competencies and the skills. We've already covered that, but the heart is what you really want. Do their values match the organization's values? What motivates them? Do they, they are motivated by money or they are motivated by doing things well and things like that, right? So staffing is a really, really important aspect. And um, invest time and effort in identifying great companies, spend a lot of time and effort in identifying the values fit. You can tell the difference between a great company and a good company because the great company will spend more time in making sure they the the people they're hiring, their values match with their company's values. And they might have companies like Google or Southwest have multiple rounds of interviews and use that, invest that time. Whereas other companies think, oh yeah, I mean, we're just looking for a person. I have the CV, I can check, oh, the person's skills match the job description. And then a couple of questions and then we are done. So this is one of the things which I really want to focus on. Focusing on the values, rather than the skills. And do not let uh, the skills trump the values. Don't hire somebody who is great salesperson or great computer programmer if their values conflict with the organization's values. In the short term, it might be great. The salesperson might come in and make a lot of money for your organization. But in the medium to long term, that salesperson will be like a cancer and create a negative organizational culture and will hurt you more than the, the sales that they got. And then we come, the final S is leadership. And I've put pictures of some famous leaders from history. This is General Patton in World War II, Mahatma Gandhi from India, different leadership styles, okay? His was a more aggressive, coercive, authoritative style. Of course, he's a military leader. Gandhi's was a more affiliative, democratic, participative style. Again, uh, from female leaders, Margaret Thatcher was more authoritative. Uh, Jacinda Ardern, who is the uh, Prime Minister of New Zealand, she's more affiliative. So affiliative styles are not necessarily feminine styles and uh, um, authoritative styles are not necessarily masculine. I'm trying to highlight here. Whether you're biologically male or female, you can choose which style you want. And by and large, of course, all of us prefer in this day and age with the millennials and so on, we prefer to have more of an affiliative style. We want, we should treat other people the way we would like to be treated. Okay? We don't like to take orders. We would like to be just asked to do things or explained why we have to do things. And we should treat other people in the same way. 
And so your values should align, the, the leadership should align with the values of the organization. And the most important aspect for the leader is to create that vision, create that vision. How the mission is the ongoing, what is the company doing or what is the organization doing? But make a tangible vision, where are we going to get to? And then that vision facilitating everybody towards that vision. And this point, which is, seems paradoxical, is really important. A leader has to be both authentic, true to themselves, yet adaptable, yet flexible to, uh, to the situation. Being flexible to the situation does not mean that you have to be fake or change your core values. Okay? So I'll